I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you a very important exercise of sketching the function from the second derivative. The question here is, given second derivative of a function, this is the second derivative of the function, sketch possible first derivative and the function, right? Sketch possible first derivative and the function. So what we are given here is actually the second derivative of the function. <clears throat> so let's begin analyzing second derivative and then we'll talk about the function and the first derivative. So, um, so what we are given here is the second derivative and we will now sketch the first derivative. Okay, so second derivative is derivative of this, correct? So if the second derivative is zero, what does it mean? I mean, if the second derivative is zero, what does it mean? Second derivative zero means that at f dash x, we had a turning point, correct? So at f dash x, we had a turning point. So, so coming back to f dash x, this means that we have a turning point. Now, let's analyze uh, second derivative with the help of, okay, so what I'll do here is I'll kind of sketch it horizontally. So what I'll do here is, let's say this is our second derivative. So, so what do we see here is that at this point, the second derivative or of the function is, is 0, right? But before that, it is positive. It changes from positive to negative. Do you see that? All along it is negative, right? And then it changes to positive. So if you're looking at the derivative part, then it is positive means increasing, correct slope? And then it decreases, and then it increases. That really means that in the first derivative, we have a maximum at this point. Correct? So we have a maximum, since we are not bothered about the scales, let me just make a maximum here. It's a turning point and it's a maximum. Turning point since the derivative is zero, and this turning point results into maximum since the graph of the derivative of this changes from positive to negative, right? And in this particular case, we are looking for a ne negative, right? So it changes from negative to positive, so we are looking for something which is kind of minimum. So we are looking for minimum, we are not drawing this graph, right? Now here it is maximum, the derivative is maximum. This really indicates the point of inflection where the we will have maximum change in the uh, the slope of the curve of f dash x. So we also refer to this as the point of inflection for the first derivative. Correct. So based on this, we can draw a simple graph saying that the derivative graph will be kind of, these two are very far away, so, so I'll make a uh, kind of like this. Do you see that? Okay. And then it goes like this, somewhere there it turns. Okay. okay. <coughs> so what we ensured here while sketching the derivative from the second derivative is that at zeros of the second derivative, we have turning points, correct? Now let's look back. If I look at the function and then go back to the second derivative, then, well, if I have a tangent here, it is zero, that means its derivative will have a zero, right? A tangent here is a zero, its derivative, which is the second derivative, will have a zero. It has a point of inflection here, that's the maximum rate of change, correct? maximum rate of change. Since it is moving with negative slope, maximum negative value. Does make sense to you. Correct? Now, let's get back to sketching the derivative of the function, which is f of x. If you analyze the second derivative, which is given to us here, in that case, you what you notice is, it is positive in this interval. That means f of x should be 
concave up, right? Positive, concave up. This is because it is positive. Shape of the function is concave up. During this interval, it's negative. So shape of the curve should be concave down. In this interval, since second derivative is negative. So this is for second derivative. We started with second derivative, correct? Beyond this point, beyond this point, uh, it's better to write a and b here. So beyond this point, okay, a and b here, it is again positive and therefore the function f of x will be increasing, correct? So what we change, what we see here is that the concavity changes at these points. So we are expecting point of inflection at these two points, a and b, is it okay? So on the graph of this, we have point of inflection at A and B. Is it okay? At A and B. Since the concavity is changing, correct? Concavity is changing. Now, so that is one thing which we notice. Now, if you compare with the derivative of the function, then what we notice that the derivative is zero at these three points. So in our case, well, this is not very uh, good graph since I kind of messed up here. But anyway, uh, these are the two points where they should be turning points, right? Let me call these points as CDF. CDF. So on this function, CDF are the turning points. So we are combining all the information which we've got to to get the graph, correct? Right? So that those becomes the turning points. And of course, what we also notice from this, it changes from negative to positive. It changes from negative to positive, resulting a minimum at C, right? So at C, we have minimum. At D, it changes from positive to negative. So at D, we have maximum. And at F, it changes again from negative to positive. So we have a minimum. Do you see that? Another thing which you know about polynomials is that as we go in the backward direction, degree increases. We went from a parabola to a cubic and we are looking for a quartic function. So we are also looking for a quartic function. All this information combined together helps you to sketch a very accurate graph in the given situation, correct? So this point is a minimum. So let me make this point as a minimum. Let, let's say this is, do you see this minimum point? This is f of x. So instead of making this green, I'm making now, uh, or let's go with green, okay. So, so we make a minimum here, and we do have a minimum at f also. So I'll make a minimum kind of here. So these two are minimums for me. At d, we have a maximum. So, so at D, we have a maximum somewhere like this. And the concavity changes at A and B. So, so the graph will be kind of, see, till A, A is this point, till A, it is going to be concave up. Do you see that? And then concave down. And now in this case, till B, I've shifted this a bit more on this side, till B, it is concave down. So till B, it is con I mean, I have to go up to this place till B, it is concave down and then it changes to its concavity and goes like this. Do you see that? So important thing is the zeros of our graph indicates the concavity change point of inflection and we have already figured out how to figure out our uh, turning points, whether they're maximum or minimum and sketch our function. I hope that helps to understand the basic concept. I'd like you to go through this video once again, see what I did here. How did I come from second derivative to first derivative and then from second to the function itself, also taking into consideration what we learn while making the first derivative. This is a very important exercise and is going to help you in many different ways. I hope you appreciate it. Feel free to post your comments, share, subscribe to my videos, and if you like, that'll be great. Thank you, and all the best.